Hello everybody, welcome back to Wampleville. We're going to finish off something that we started, oh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. This is the Hydra that belongs to this base. And we did this base in a recent live session. You see we've got our flaming skulls, your optic source lighting. And you can see that that's being cast up onto our Hydra. In the last session we also established that we're going to do this magenta lighting right here inside the heads but we've got to do some of these areas around here and while this looks like it just should be okay a bunch of bluish gray we're gonna put some greens in there some teals a whole bunch of different stuff and I'm gonna get that base out of the way and by the way I will link those things here I'm just gonna see if I can get some of these things going here uh, there's that one let's see if we can do our other chat and do the same thing here we go. So we refresh that. We'll wait and see if somebody shows up in the chat, and then we'll double check that. I'm going to make my window just a little bit bigger over here so that I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Here, let me just reduce the size of this, and now I can see everything. So we have used, as the title states, a lot of these Pro Acryl transparent blue transparent red orange yellow full gamut of these guys right here and using all of these we've also used a few other opaque colors here and we've got bright ivory faded ultramarine for the folks that do a lot of the reaper paints the clear inliners think of this as the maggot flesh or maggot white and the Maiden Flesh. Maiden Flesh, Maggot White. Now we also played around with some of these guys here. These are some of the golden acrylics. Now I have a whole bunch of different, oh my gosh, at least 20 different tutorials showing all different kinds of fluorescent paints. These have become a favorite of mine. Just a lot of really nifty properties and I got, a, like I said, a ton of videos that show those in action now that's what we got here we got transparent black brown purple blue green yellow yellow orange red here's our fluorescence orange and magenta then we got faded ultramarine the one color to rule them all and the bright ivory over here we are working with the usual right here our number eight round craft brushes now what I want to do is like I said not just get more lights in here but a little more life to this so let's go in and let's start to I don't know enjoy some of the things that these clear I call them Reaper clear paints that they're, they're basically to me they're like the Reaper clear paints and also I mean if you're talking about contrast paints they're in some ways what I do with these is real similar to this. Alright, so what I'm going to do is start off with a few, inject a few darks into here. The nice thing about these, and it's the same that goes for the Reaper Clears and Liner Paints, is that you can do glazes with just water. You don't need the contrast medium or anything like that. You don't have to worry about really about that the water marks that sort of thing like I'm just taking my finger I'm just gonna wipe some of this away and tonight what we're gonna do is just basically reinforce some of our darks here like I'm just gonna take a little more water here and you can see how that just fills in fills right in there that's just the blue and the black mixed together now the contrast paints, uh, there's about 34 of those guys. Okay, so, well, looks like that works. So we got ourselves a chat. And what I'm going to do is make my window even bigger, because thank you very much, Trevor, for the test chat. Here we go. Now, I do have, of course, these guys, makeup sponges. So if you don't want to use your finger, you can do this. 
And you can see the difference that's already making. And again, all it is, that's the, I almost called it the clear blue, uh, blue liner. Right now, yeah, again, the folks that are used to the Reaper clear and liner paints, I'm basically making blue liner right there. It's sort of a Prussian blue type of a color. It's not very warm. It's almost towards the greenish side of things. So here, we we'll, just drop that there. What are we going to do? We're actually going to... Look at this. It's almost like we're oil painting. So instead of wiping it away, I actually... Look at this. I'm actually pulling that out of the crevice. And I'm sort of painting with my... Oh, yeah. Uh, I've been saving this because this is the basically the last 48 hours of the campaign. And I'll show you that in a second here. Oh, I believe that is here. And there we go. Mortal Gods Mythic by Footsore. So uh, 32 hours to go. So they've obviously cleared their their main goal. I wanted to get down to the, the Hydra's... Ah, there's this, oh, look at that. Somebody must have used some, uh, some kind of material there to make the... What is that? What would you say? Oh, there's a lot of stretch goals. There's your Hydra right there. You see him unpainted. Obviously, I used a little different base than what comes with that, but plenty of other, how uh, basically sort of Harryhausen, right? I'll go as a Jason and the Argonauts kind of thing, kind of vibe going on right there. So look at how much darker that is, and there's a couple reasons to make that dark. Well, yeah, your object source lighting is going to show up more, and if you catch the the first two episodes, and like I said, I will do some links at the at the end of this. There's going to be my end screens, and you get two end screens. And guess what? Both of them are going to be. They're both going to be the episodes, the first two episodes of me painting this and the base. So look at what's happening here. So we take some away, and we've darkened that down. I'm going to get to my camera controls here, and I'm going to increase the brightness just a tad so like i said think of this as just me working with some blue liner here injecting some more dark into this and my my goal is at the end of a unspecified amount of time here is that i will find my well anything i'll just sit them on the base but i would like to I think I've got some holes already drilled into the Hydra here. I want to drill a few holes in the base and just at least give you a peek at what he looks like on the base. Now, like I said, I can look at this. See, by adding more water to it, it's just less, it's not quite so intense anymore, which means I can take it up here. I don't want it to quite be so dark. I actually wiped some of the paint away with the my little rag right there so that's kind of almost an oil painting thing right there this this is why i try to show as many oil painting tutorials as i can and show that yes they, there's there's differences there's differences between the two but what i'm doing right here this is the same kind of stuff i do with oils i would add some of the white spirits to it and thin it down so here, we're just going to throw this here, and now look what we're going to do. Take this sponge here, look at that, we're just going to wipe that away where our lighting is. Now that gets brighter, not by piling in more lighter and lighter colors and making that, <clears throat> maybe that just too intense of a glow. If you want to have light, you got to have dark. That's just kind of how it is. You don't have one without the other. I've seen endless examples of people that do the, like a white robe or something, and they're going to have uh, maybe an orange glow on it. And lo and behold, the orange glow is darker than the white robe that it's supposed to be casting light on. And as I say light, I'm making air quotes with my mind. And that's, I, I can't stress that enough. You have got to have some kind of dark 
like this here we want this little bit of lighting that's showing right here we want that lighter we have to make the rest of this darker it's just how it is it may not be you may visualize a certain color of the skin beforehand but guess what you will have to modify those wishes to physics and, and light and physics are a thing and Bettany knows that how you how you doing I am guessing I'm gonna take a wild stab that your temperature is probably a hundred degrees warmer than it is here because well it was minus one this morning and it was about between six and eight degrees Fahrenheit that is all day and I'm assuming you are still in the 37 to 40 degrees Celsius range up down there now look at look at what that does right there look at what that does yeah it, it, it tints the stuff too so it gives a little bit almost of a greenish tint right there it's gonna make this magenta short that much right let me see we're just gonna make that a little bit darker a little darker over here and that just by default is going to make other areas lighter now I may end up doing a whole lot of glazing here I really didn't expect to be doing that but straight away I saw what a few glazes did I said ah, I gotta gotta do some more of that too now there might be some areas that I just don't mess around with too much because it's gonna be too hard for you to see it too hard for me to see it or too impossible to get the brush in here because this is some tight quarters right now this hydra's head is about five eighths of an inch from the palette camera and he's only about two inches away from a magnifier light so it's it's close quarters fighting here this this is this here is the painting octagon Bet you most people never thought they'd hear that on a live painting stream before. Actually, that would be a really nifty painting contest. Way more fun than the usual thing that you see. That ah, could be really interesting. You are actually in a cage, and people have to throw you paint, and you have to fight for the paint, and then try and paint a miniature. Now, I, I don't know if biting and kicking while painting are allowed that may have to be prior to the painting phase although who knows maybe that could also make things a little more interesting too so we'll just darken this stuff down gee whiz maybe well the painting octagon yeah I should do that for my twitch and or something like that I was gonna have it be something like painting better or faster but boy that just sounds so that just sounds too mellow compared to the painting octagon oh yes happy birthday uh, yeah well you as you know you can always watch these anytime like those two things that I'm gonna link at the end of this I, I do hope that you got more miniatures to paint I know most of us don't necessarily need more miniatures to paint but sometimes there's just that special miniature that you would really like to have and oh, gee I'm trying to think the last time I painted a Hydra that was years ago I think maybe a, no I only ever painted the one it was one of the old metal GW Hydras. Now this one is significantly easier to deal with than the old metal GW Hydra. It's it's fairly clear what piece goes where. Each of the heads, the, the parts are lettered. So yeah, I will basically this this week and the last week were really rough with commission things stuff that I just could not do on live streams like this so what I'm hoping is next week things are a little bit less crazy 
and I can do some more live streams for you guys. There'll be some some war cry. There will be some Marvel Crisis Protocol. There'll be some more Mantic things. Possibly another Hellboy, but there's some Kings of War figures that I'm prepping, and they're they're really nifty. I I think they're gonna be fun. Real real different cut type of figure. Nothing I've ever really painted before, and I think those uh, I'd maybe do a a color test version of one of those for you. So look at look at what we're doing here. See that the change that that makes, right? That's just a couple of brush strokes. Like I just took some of the paint away. I put some more water in the brush. It's sort of a watercolor trick right there. Look at that. All of a sudden, a whole bunch. Here, let me turn it this way. There, you, now you can see it. That was like this right here. We're gonna do the same, same thing. It's what I like about. These, that's why I like the Reaper Clear and liners. This type of thing I'm about to do right here. Okay, I'm gonna turn it this way. Get you see it. See that? See, I just took some. This is basically just a brush that has some, just some water. And let me get that red out of here. Actually, red right there. Not such a horrible thing. But look at that. See that nifty transition that just happened right there? Uh, let's grab a little more of my blue here. The other thing that I want to show you is getting some interesting colors in your dark. Let's see if we can't work some greens. But we're starting to work some greens into these darks. But I want to work some greens into there, some, some of that into the mid-tones also. There we go, a little bit more of the water right there. Ah, uh, there we go. I think you can see it now. There's a little bit more, and then the master sponge. Oh, let's hit this side. Right like so. Let's see, what do we want to do? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> this is another that you just can't see it. It's too far down into the crevice, but got to be done. Maybe you can see this as I walk this out. I just added essentially just water to the rest. I'm just kind of marching that up right there. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now we did that work on the other side. Let's do it on this side. Now the interesting thing is that, well, reflected light is not just the object source lighting. There is more to it than that. And we certainly got to get some of that into this area here. It can't just be this isolated dark color here. Again, water. March this down. I was about some more over here. Back to the sponge. We're not just taking away. See, we're actually moving that paint around. That's because, well, the sponge kind of has a bunch of paint in it. But if I want to take away some more, I can have a fresh sponge. Some of these are things that I also will do with the oil paints. And they're not mutually exclusive. There seems to be just an awful lot of, wow, if you're doing this one thing, you can't do the other thing. Which really, that's just not the case at all. You can see what a difference this will make down in here. At least I hope you can. And now basically just washed out the brush. There's really nothing on the brush except for some water. Let's get a little more of the 
black in there. Not so much to darken the color, but to actually just sort of tint it. Looking for that bit of greenishness. And you can see with this, again, it's a number eight round. It's a craft brush. It's package of 12 is $4.99. I get these from Hobby Lobby. It's they're not just unique to Hobby Lobby. You can find things like this elsewhere. If if you don't have a Hobby Lobby in the country where you reside or the area where you reside or whatever, I'm pretty sure that your local art store, craft store, one of those type of places is going to have some synthetic watercolor brushes for you. And you say, what's the deal with the synthetic stuff? Well, it takes a beating. I was just cleaning this brush with some rubbing alcohol a little bit before I started this here. A couple different ways I can approach making lighter color. So I got some green over here. got some of my faded ultramarine. Now here's the thing. Look at how instantaneously that affects that. I mean, wow. Huge effect straight away. But let's, let's see if we can start to get some purple going here. Gotta throw a touch of blue into that. So I have myself a little rainbow arc of colors. I'm gonna let me have a little bit of green work its way in there. And we're gonna see if we can't add some stuff. Oh yeah, here we go. Looking to add some color down here. A little bit of that middle tone. Now I'm going to go back to that again. That's got a little more of the turquoise in it. Oh, Gary's in the house. Thanks. He's the first Gary. You're, you're a first Gary. You have won that race. Yeah, uh, they they have it transparent. I saw that on Dick Blick. That's where I got most of my golden acrylics from. I'll try those at, at some point. There's a whole bunch of other things that have come in that I have to try. I've got Green Stuff World. They're new sort of, well, they're not necessarily weathering paints, but they're sort of like, oh, think of dry pigments, uh, weathering powders, that sort of thing. It's sort of like those, but in a jar. So we're going to give those a test. There's lots of them to test out. But see that, that turquoise that's going on the back there now? It's just a little bit different than the purple. And what it's doing is it's playing off of those washes that I did before. And all I notion is just to break up this endless sea of gradually darkening purples. That's what it's all about. There's some skin texture here, so we're also trying to maybe work some of that in. Work in a little bit of that. And you have something like this with <clears throat> all these heads. Was it two, four, six, looks like nine heads, whatever. You have to try and get some variety in there. Oh, hey there, Manu. And uh, it, correct me if I do not pronounce a name correctly. Welcome aboard. You are basically catching episode three here of the Hydra. So episode one, this thing was just primer. And we got it to the stage it was about 24-ish minutes ago. And then episode two... We did this, because this is the base that he sits on. Now you see the source of the light. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to include a couple of links to those first two episodes in the... Well, I could do them in the description too, but definitely my end screens, because those are fun, because you don't need to go look in the description which on a phone is not necessarily the easiest thing to find. Now that that base that you saw there with all the glowing skulls, those from Green Stuff World and the mosaic tile texture roller, 
that was part of a basing video that I did for the Patreon page. And now look at that scrolling right across the screen right there. And uh, the basing level, that is also part of the Dark Sword pledge level. I just made an Instagram post about the Dark Sword stuff today. Now, of course, the Army Painter pledge level, that just... That's a universal pledge level. It gets you access to everything, including what's now almost 20 series of army painting. And each series is basically five episodes long. The most recent completed series was the Lizardman Blood Bowl team. Again, using the Green Stuff World Texture Rollers, but a different one. I think that was the Aztec theme. Look at this. So we darken that down. It means now we can go back in here and start to work in some of these lighter tones. To the eye, it's not necessarily going to jump on these and see them right. Look at what we're doing there. Look at that. Remember we said we wanted to have each head be at least a little bit different color? Oh, hey, Chris. How you doing? Now, sometimes there's a... Oh, a delay in the chat. Seven seconds, something like that. When you type a message, it's going to take at least that long for me to see it. And if I'm in the middle of doing some freehand or something jinky, could take a little bit longer. So just, just be advised. Now see over here, look at the difference now. So here, the contrast to that one, we have to do a similar thing over here let's get in here and do this now but I also have to be aware of essentially light that's being cast from one head onto another there I'll just hit that oh that one I think I'm gonna hit that too like so we got Teeth, obviously, we're going to be painting on some of these. The the ones where the mouth is closed, well, that's going to be, what would you say, more your standard teeth color, <laughs> if there is such a thing. Here, let's get a little bit of this, a little more of that green. Walk that over here. And it looks real dark on the palette, but all of a sudden you get it here on the miniature and starts to look a little bit lighter. It's because we added all of these darks early on. We were trying to make sure that there was plenty, plenty of dark for us to work with. And this is distinctly, I can see a definitely more greenish here, which is good because like I said, green and purple tend to really complement each other nicely. When you mix them together, they make gray. I know, I think one of my, at least a couple of my Dark Sword videos get into that sort of a thing. And anytime I do non-metallic metals, that also pops up too. Once again, focusing more on the, that turquoise. But it is still a middle tone. Definitely still a middle tone. Here, let's, let's go. Onto this side of the neck here, we're going to throw some of that turquoise over here too. It's a little bit like, see how we did this? This neck right there that's got the blue on that side and your your lava lighting, or not lava, your f fire lighting on the other side. We're doing a little bit of that here on the neck. And what's interesting is what we're making a green, one of the light color that we're mixing in there is the faded ultramarine blue, which is essentially kind of a purple type color. So once then you can see how those purples and greens just like to go together. Look at that. See, now we have a little bit more of the faded ultramarine in there. You know, let's get... Because I have the, uh, the colors out on the palette like this, I can just sort of go back and forth. Just back and forth. 
Here's some more. Again, that lighter turquoise. Now, let's not forget what we're doing over here. And this was, oh my gosh, probably a couple of weeks ago when I did this portion here. And yet, I didn't, I didn't write any colors down. I didn't take any pictures of anything. But because I just am sticking with these same colors, basically a bunch of transparent paints with a couple of lighter colors. That's it. I'm, it. Keep it simple, stupid. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm keeping it simple for myself. It's so much easier to, instead of, oh my god, which red did I mix? Which red did I grab? Well, I just, I grabbed the red. Boom. That That's the red. There is no other red. If I want to make another red, uh, take some of the yellow, some of the magenta, something else, some of the faded ultramarine, and just make the red that I need instead of going around searching for it. Uh, we did that too in, in the early days when it was, you primed the whole thing black, and if a thing is red, you find every red color that you've got until you realize, well, great. My darker red is too warm. My medium gray is too blue, and the other one is just dead. It has no real life to it. If you could just mix your own, and by mixing... Oh boy, I think people make it way too complicated. They bring in color wheels and all this kind of stuff. Not really necessary. You say, okay, is that red more more orange? Is it more purple? Is it more magenta? If it looks a little bit more pink, well, it's got magenta in it. If it looks a little more orange, well, it's got more yellow in it. And I, I just, I wish people would not instantly go to the complex formula thing and this and that and the other and just kind of say what it is and, and a little bit more. Uh, it, it's just like when... People do tech speak to me. I said, look, do I just tell me if I need to reboot this or don't tell me, well, in the BIOS, this, that, and the other, just kind of tell me. I don't need code words. Again, this, it's a junky, what, 30 something cent brush. Depends on what the sales tax are where you live. Or sales tax is. Now we'll go back to the purple here. And look at this. We're just going to... I mean, side by side. Got some purple. Next to that, more of a turquoise there. And when the viewer sees this from a distance, they're not going to just look at it. Oh, look at that. Look, I see the faded ultramarine right there. Well, maybe Nestor could find that. Those of us that know the, the power of faded ultramarine, we know we can find it anywhere. And again, the, the paints from Pro Acryl, you're looking to get them. Just add on over to the Creature Caster web store there. I will be doing some Creature Caster videos. I've already got several of those on the Patreon page. It, I think it was a three-part series. I've got some others that are destined for more multi-part series. Well, love me some oils. If I can find... Oh, she is over there. Speaking of oils, yeah, this is the most recent one that I did for the Patreon page here. This was done in oils. It's a 75 mil figure right there. That is from... Black Sun miniatures. But I've got Big Child Creatives miniatures coming. Oh, gosh. Uh, Chimera, right? Now, yeah, lots of Big Child Creatives figures are on the way. That's going to be fun. So now I've got actually some water here. And I can let that sort of mix in with my paint right there. Now as we turn this around you can start to see 
we got our lava there and it's real important that we not go too far with this ambient light and we talked about this a whole bunch on each of the first two episodes if your ambient light is is brighter than the fire light source your fire light source is going to look pretty dim and maybe not super convincing so it, it's supposed to be casting light after all so yeah I just you have to think of it that way Uh, the other thing, too, is look how we're holding the brush. See, it's kind of a chill thing right here. We don't have the, the death grip on the end like that. That's just going to, well, it's probably going to make it real tense and real sore after not a whole lot of painting. Because I've, I've seen people, and I wonder how they don't just snap their brush in half. I mean, they got a death grip on that thing. So on the other side of the, what would you call it, the central neck we did more of a turquoise so on this side I'm gonna see if I can't do more of this lighter purple again we're gonna bring that feed it ultramarine over there always trying to be aware that as soon as you add those the pro acryl I just call them regular colors those babies are really opaque and it's just something you've got to be aware of. It's just like with the oil paint, you got to be aware of how thick or thin your paint is, both on your brush and on the miniature. When you're doing this kind of a thing with your with the transparents, they're they're nifty because they make the opaques less opaque. But there there's becomes sort of a certain threshold. Now look at so see there that's got the and then there it's got a little more of your turquoise going on. Now again, there's some of these necks here, but I just I literally cannot reach the brush at all. So I can only do so much there. Let's work our way yeah, into this one here. And there, there may be some of these where I just kind of maybe don't notice it and, and maybe bypass it a little bit in all of the the usual mayhem of a live session but be sure to check out those other two episodes because I try not to do with at least with the live sessions I try not to do multi-part episodes because I just know for me the, the YouTube channels that I follow when they do multi-part episodes it can be difficult for me to keep track of what they're doing and maybe not miss one of the episodes so while it's it's nifty to do multi-part things it I don't know to me it seems like it, it can be really tough so that's why most of the miniatures that I do I try and make those things that I can finish in one sitting now, right now, we've only been at this for 38 minutes-ish, something like that. So, we've got we got ourselves a ways to go yet. So, again, see that side? We put the turquoise over there, and now on this side, this is where we're going more with our purple slash magenta slash faded ultramarine. I think, yes, you can. Yes, you can see what we're going to add to that to the neck right here. Okay, let's see, look at how light the touch is on the brush there. So I can do a feathered brush to it, not a dry brush whatsoever. Look at that. There's plenty of water on that brush. But because I don't have a death grip on it, that's going to let me do a nice soft brush stroke here. There is a lot of texture on the necks of these guys. And we're just trying to bring that out a little bit here. I'm going to go a little bit more with my faded ultramarine. Lighten that up and 
these little linear brush strokes they are essentially following some of the sculpted texture that's in on this it's a little bit of a cross hatching kind of a texture it looks like and I'm just I'm just following what was already done so same thing here but all the while got to be careful the interior of that mouth is supposed to be glowing oh uh, look at the was at the bottom right hand corner reference there I think that pretty much shows you what I was looking for in those faces so look at, look at what that does now it gets it a little more texturized and yes I can go to a smaller brush that's it's not like I don't ever use smaller brushes I have those too but this just keeps me a little bit more free and open now look at what's what's happening right here I think this is a decent example I think this should work for the point I want to illustrate here so see we've got kind of the orange here it's like he's casting a shadow here on our fiery object source lighting and see that's why we got our lights here right so it kind of gives us that that sense of the neck is turning suddenly but then the the fire effect is blocked there well that's blocked I want to actually make this we're gonna go a tad darker over here so again just just nothing but water no mediums nothing fancy and look at that we're gonna double down we're gonna make that even darker on the other side find some more darks here I'm not quite sure you can see all of that but trust me it's there oh what the heck let's really go insane here with some green look at that that's a nifty jade so that's the transparent green mixed with your faded ultramarine basically becomes jade which is another favorite color I'm just in the shadow areas here just trying to steal a few little areas of interest here and something that's what you have to do in, in large areas like this over here this this whole huge back carapace or whatever you want to call this over here it could really just sort of drone on and be especially boring because we got all the exciting fiery light stuff going on on the other side of it this is one way to just keep it from getting boring so now we're gonna dive in here and try and work in something besides just that same old purple color here and I realize you can't essentially see anything of what I'm doing there but I am going to bring it out here like so all right so I see there was a cycle of dropped frames there hopefully that wasn't too weird and the crazy thing is that those really don't show up on the what would you say the rebroadcast or whatever I did there's no there is no explaining it it's it happens uh, with the people on twitch and it happens on OBS it happens uh, everywhere streamlabs whatever you're using the internet's pretty much just gonna hose you so now we've got another situation here we got a little bit of our lighting effect there so we've got to this is the more the ambient light slash color of the hydra that I want to get into here again just sneaking in a little bit of this turquoise here and then I can even go in there and add some some more darks now look at how watery that is right there 
Maybe we can strengthen some of these darks. Now there's probably going to be some areas down here on the, the chest or whatever that I will need to touch up because, well, there's a whole bunch of blue tack covering those. So just like we did around about a half an hour ago, we're taking some of the water in there. Look at this. We're doing just some, some glazes there. That doesn't mean we can't go back into our let's see, purple and the faded ultramarine. Oh, uh, let's see, Nikazino. And again, if I ever mispronounce something, you can always say, nope, it's pronounced this way. So I don't know if you saw the previous episodes where we were, episode one, we were painting this part of the hydra here, establishing all the lighting effects. Episode two was the base, and now you see where all the light sources are. And both of those, those are going to be linked, obviously, at the end of this. And I also have links to the foot sore Kickstarter campaign. It's, well, probably now it's in its final, what, 35 hours, I think. Something like that. So it's getting towards the end, and it would seem like they met a bunch of stretch goals because it didn't quite look like that the last time we scrolled through it. So uh, I think they've added a few stretch goals since we last saw the campaign. Look at this. Look at that. We can just... Remember we had all the, the turquoise going there. Now we've got something different. And it's, it's almost like the, the chain of highlights that we talk about on our non-metallic medals. Oh, hey there. Hey, Gil. Sarah, I missed you guys tonight. I was actually setting all this stuff up. I'm, I'm guessing that, well, I don't know, some of them might still be in the Hangout. And that would be the Styrene Syndicate, a real fun place where it talks about a whole variety of stuff. Model kits, miniatures, large-scale figures. And <laughs> by large-scale, some of these are really large. Because you just you check out Red Dragon Model Works and you can see Gilbert painting some colossal well, 10, 12-inch tall casts some really nifty superhero type stuff right now actually uh how did the thing go with the, the the brass rods on the bones dragons there to stop the wilting because i saw that facebook post oh around about five thirty six or something like that so hopefully that helped Because, yeah, the, those old-fashioned bones, I have no idea if the Bones 5 or Bones Black or whatever the heck they call the stuff, if that's actually going to... Oh, left around midnight. Yeah, they, I've, they've they been going till this time before. It's, it has not been unprecedented. Yeah, this is I mean, an area that just, you know, you think, oh, this is the fun area here where you got all this stuff going on. But you just can't forget these areas, too. Now, on things like monsters, well, these kind of areas, there's going to be more of them. What would you say? Potential low-interest areas? Well, that just means you, as the painter, you've got to turn those at least into medium-interest areas. Yeah, we're doing that here. I mean, just, look, we're doing cross-hatching. How hard is that? But look at how... I'll we'll do some more of that. See how it's sort of following along just the, the arc of this thing here. But now, again, we got our turquoise over there. Now, so the, the brass rods are working. I, I saw... Well, yeah, that's right. That was something you didn't know you were going to be adding early on. But good old Badger Steinol Res Primer should... It looked like it was holding up to the abuse there. 
of having to take painted dragons and stuff two gigantic brass rods into them. Here, let's hit this one over here. Like so, yeah. Yeah, needs that. Over here, though, i got to be careful because we wanted, remember, we wanted some differential in color. Some areas more turquoise, some the other. Here we got a little bit of both working, some of that lighter purple there. But all the while, i got to be aware of what's going on with us here. Ah, so it was Bones 5. Yeah, I haven't, uh, the only Bones 5 things I've seen with a couple of pre-release sample figures, whatever, that they had at Adepticon. I think a whole bunch of people had those to paint already. Uh, you could just buy them. They were, it wasn't like there was any kind of super secret thing about them. But, yeah, we don't, that's the only Bones 5 stuff that we've got. Oh, what the heck, we're going to... We're going to take the, the faded old terrain, we're going to mix it into the green. Now we got sort of a turquoise, so we're actually, check it out, we're going to highlight what was kind of a purple thing going on. Now we just got turquoise going in there now, um, just because, and we're going to go more, and oh, by the way, to faded old terrain, that's still sort of a light middle tone. There's, and even that ivory there, that's not white. It's, it's one of those things, and you hear me preaching this all the time. Just don't do the white thing on your palette. Have something, it can be a lighter color, but make sure it's got some color to it. Ooh, that, that's almost t-shirt worthy right there. Here, let's, let's double down on this. Let's go a little more over here. Yeah. Okay, now I also have to decide what would you say, how shiny are the scales going to be? I guess that's the other thing that, that sort of has to be done there. Let's see, now that's got a little more stuff going on. Because it's easy to have that be interesting. I mean, that's no big deal right there. Out here, to try and secure a little bit of interest, that's a whole other thing. Now, the other thing, too, is with this stuff here, I don't want to get too wrapped up in assigning color to that because, well, he's going to be sitting. You know, let me just do something here and grab my base. Uh, so, where you got this green and red and the mosaic here, well, some of that should be reflected on, on these down here. So, that may be something that I have to do Sort of after the fact, I don't know. I just don't know yet. But here, let's... Yeah, you can see what I'm doing here. Let's see, with each of these, it starts to bring out that texture a bit more. I don't want to lose my turquoise over there, but this certainly could use some lighter treatment right here. Like so, and as a skill, well, look at where I'm holding the brush. It's just two fingers, basically. It's literally just those couple of fingers holding that brush, being nice and gentle about it, being chill, not trying to choke the brush or snap it in half. All right, so we got turquoise, turquoise in the middle now, just like we did on that other Hydra's neck. Look what we got going on here. That that sort of purple thing happening. Here again, we're following some of the nifty little stuff that's sculpted in there. Okay, let's let's just not lose track of our. Oh, hey, Arox, how's it going? Yeah, I'm, I've been looking forward to this for a while here. I didn't dare take him off of the. Because the, the blue tech here, you know how it is. When you take something off of the blue tech, the blue tech just never really holds the same way again. And I just said, you know what? We're just going to we're gonna leave them on there till the last possible minute. And I got this. I'm just having so much fun here adding in that, that 
turquoise right there. Look at we got the lighter purple here, but now we got the turquoise going over here. We are gonna we're gonna accentuate that some more. Evil Elvis is in the house. How are you doing? Now I was hoping that I could do this one today. It was either gonna be today or tomorrow night. Now, what was the last vi Oh yeah, I, I posted a sort of a regular video of the the giant because oh boy, I mean I just was buried under commission stuff and it was not things that I could do as part of a video. So if you're wondering why there wasn't one earlier this week, that would be your reason why. Yeah, we're looking for more turquoise and I'm guessing that really wasn't what people thought they were going to be seeing when they saw me working over here because that was a little bit more grayish I would say but right along here, again just, just continuing with this just nasty old craft brush it's all it is but look how we're we're injecting some texture into this here See that the turquoise starts to wander a little bit into where the that more purple type color is. Oh, let's do this neck too. And this side of the face slash head. Just really couldn't figure out are those supposed to be horns or whatever. I I tried not to look at the 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 one that they had painted. I just wanted to look at the sculpt and just see what I saw in it and just try and do that because you, know, you can see on the, the foot sore Kickstarter campaign you can see what theirs looks like and that's a really nifty one it's it's traditional they got some nifty things going on with the that saliva effect right so again here more of the Faded ultramarine, still not going into white. Oh, Evil Elvis painted the Tree of Despair, put magnets in it. Oh, I have not seen the, uh, that's a, what, a Bones 5 type of thing. I haven't seen the Tree of Despair, so I guess I will have to look that up. Going to do the same over here now on this head. But here... Let's just not forget. We're going to go back over here to our purple. Eh, touch of green into that. Touch of green. Working with the... Again, these are the Pro Acryl transparent paints here. We're just adding a couple of lighter colors to them. It makes them more opaque. Uh, so I see we've hit the point in our programming where it doesn't tell me how many folks are watching. But it doesn't matter because we're just going to keep plowing on with this here. And just as we did on the other next there, we'll not just work in the lighter colors, but color variation, texture variation too. Let's see, we're trying to do some of these little cross hatches that are sculpted in. But then we switch over more to turquoise here. We got an area that would just sort of not be a super thrilling thing to look at. We have to make an area like that just be more interesting. It's on us now. And there's, there's texture there. You can see it. But that little that shift from the the purple to the turquoise it's a subtle thing it's not gonna it's not gonna beat people over the head but it definitely now it gives them a little something to look at when they turn this thing around and you know they see all of this but it is gonna complement this uh, so 15 thank you very much guys appreciate that because it well <laughs> it lets me know if I'm still actually on air. Oh my gosh. Now, well, geez, probably in about six hours-ish. 
the Nick and his brother Ted or Ned they're gonna start their live stream which is basically it's sort of a YouTube camp and actually a lot of the things that that I've done for the my channel is stuff that I learned from them well they're gonna start their live thing and boy the last three four weeks between Windows updates to OBS update all the other updates that have happened to a man then there's two guys working on this live stream and so much mayhem happens all this so many tech things just go haywire and then there's two of them so basically one of them can just be sitting there desperately typing away trying to fix chats or whatever is going wrong there's just me here and well I'm kind of busy I'm just throwing that out there I'm a little bit preoccupied with I don't know this thing with the nine heads so again we got that sort of texture there let's let's see what we can do you know what we're gonna, we're gonna add something different here so I don't know if you can see it but that purple now that's closer to this why because we used basically a warmer lighter color the, the value of this pretty much the same I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some of this on here now because I want to try one of my yeah I try one of my little tricks here just let me get a few of these and uh, so again just that's more of a what would you say more of a magenta purple instead of the more bluish purple right so we got that there let me go over to Mr. Camera Controls and go zoink like that. So we've just turned this black and white. So you can see again that the lighting still happens. Look at now you can really see actually in black and white. Look at how their their faces stand out that much more that even when they're in color with all the saturation on. Now we've got the base and you can see the same thing here. You can see all the shape. We've turned it black and white but you can see all of that shape the lighting effect is still there that's I love doing stuff like this because there are more forms of contrast there's like at least four if not five maybe six types of contrast that you can utilize it doesn't just have to be well making one thing lighter than another or even making one thing green and one thing red effectively we are kind of doing a green red contrast believe it or not it may not seem that way but we kind of are let me see I'm going to see if I can't give me one second here there just had to move something around so we're going to add some of this brighter purple down in here into my even into my shadow areas but and when people look at this they are not going to see aha uh -huh, that's what I'm looking for okay better this is definitely a much redder here let's get some of that down here too let's not neglect this area Okay, work in with some cross hatches. What was the first thing we put in this area? We actually put a green. Look at you can still see some of that green. We're just gonna we're gonna put that right next to it. That's what we're gonna do. I mean this is it's supposed to be a magical critter anyway. Let's go with some magically delicious colors on this thing. And I'm even going to I think now start to play with some of the colors in the face and remember we had used this fluorescent here from golden acrylics oh evil elvis also painted three hero clicks boy i haven't seen one of those in a while would be interesting trying to paint one of those guys 
the, what the, I'm sure the Badger Steiner was cover that no problem. It would be pretty much like painting a Bones miniature, I would think, at that point. So what we did on the other side, we're going to march some of that over here. Oh, let's get, yeah, right in here. But you can see, it's just a few brush strokes here and there. And we're giving it a light touch. Very light touch with that. You can see some more of that. The transparent green in there. So look at this. We've got, see it goes to the more turquoise. And now it shifts to this more magenta style purple here. whole idea just to make areas that ordinarily wouldn't su be super interesting just to try and make those more interesting now we're gonna go back to our that more of a turquoise look here right there under his eye bring out some of that texture This is, in effect, we're, we're playing red and green off of each other. Because, well, there's obviously red in our fire glow, too. Let's not forget that. But with the magenta that, that's sort of being breathed out of their their mouths, well, that's also, I mean, it counts as a red. It does, when you don't have a red, the next closest thing sort of counts for that. So it's like a line of succession. Ooh, now there, there's another t-shirt worthy phrase there. Of course, can never remember these darn phrases. Alright, once again, looking for some turquoise here on the heads. Let's see, we got nostrils over there. We got more of the the eyes here. And remember all of that all the darker tones that we added earlier, that just makes it even easier at this stage to start getting some nifty contrast. Now let's keep going. The other thing too, okay, think of it this way by using this, well, basically a simple palette, if you want to call it that, whatever. Limited palette, I hate that expression. I like to just call it a compressed palette. It's going to be easy to match this further down the line because I'm, I'm just taking these couple of colors. The other thing is it's really easy to have color unity when you're pretty much using the same color to lighten all your other colors. Now we got some chat things going on. My news says, have you ever tried to do freehand reflections on top of water texture before? Actually, oh my God, way back in the day. Wow, way back in the day. We're talking 15, 16 years ago. I did that. I'm going to... This is some Dark Sword figures. I think I'm going to give that a shot. Uh, maybe make it more of a part of a diorama. There's also some 75 mil figs. I was thinking of doing that too. So it, the, the stuff that I did in the past was long before I ever could film things so that's definitely something I've, I've thought about yeah let's see here's another thing that's coming up this is for the patreon page here so this is going to be basically a painted backdrop here but maybe see how she's casting a shadow on the wall i want to try and do that hey dominic how's it going welcome aboard yeah i'm gonna again take some more of that Faded Ultramarine. Look into in the corners over here. It's similar to what we did. See the on some of those other necks right there. But as far as tips for for doing that reflection, that the big challenge is 
can you make it where it can just be at least viewed from a few different directions instead of just the one? It's sort of helpful actually to have a backdrop on a figure. Like I just, that one I showed you, that's pretty much why I grabbed that one, is because if you have a backdrop on it, now they sort of look at it from the one angle. But if you want it to be viewed from multiple angles, Basically, you've got to you have to figure out just where that water source is going to be and make it. It's going to sound weird, but you have to make it possible. That you just, you have to choose just that right direction, that sweet spot. And I I couldn't tell you who it was, but someone did some kind of a reflection that actually did work from multiple angles. It wasn't just, oh, you must look at it this way, and if you look at it any other way, the whole reflection thing just kind of collapses and doesn't work. So see what we doing there. Again, we're trying to work in, still leaving that as our... We, we just can't outstrip our reflected light, the actual light source, with just the ambient light. It's something I'll be preaching over and over again. And if you've seen the other two episodes in, in this project, you know I repeated that over and over again, especially on the base. But see, look what we can do. We can just continue to lighten some of these up, and all the while we're just using this big old brush. Nowhere near the metal. Because well, again, in in art school, if you're if you're doing one of these here, they would just take the brush away from you, and you sat there and looked kind of silly. And it, it's not just about having more freedom to make the the brush stroke that you need. It's also it, it's going to be easier on your hand. Now, maybe you don't paint 8 to 18 hours a day like I do. You can believe me that it makes a difference. <laughs> it makes a difference on my hand. Okay, so I'm going to... I just threw in a little bit of the... Just a touch of white. And you can see, boy, the difference that makes just that tiny little touch of it there. Look at that. We are certainly not going to go nuts with that. We're just going to be very sparing with that lighter color. And even that, I mean, it's not white. We have really knocked down the intensity of it. And these are the, right here, th this sort of thing, this is what gives your, the fire effect, it's glowing Look, it's a combination of the light versus dark, warm versus cool, saturated versus unsaturated, on and on. Let's get some more lights into this face here, too. Get a bunch more texture there now on those heads. I have to figure out just how light are we going to... This is sort of a critical area right here. To see just how much of that catches a here, too. I think it should. I think you can see what's starting to happen, too, is we're getting layers of texture. We got the layer of the purple layer of the magenta layer of the turquoise and now a layer of lighter texture over the top of those three so even in places where maybe either there's not a whole lot of sculpted texture or none at all it did, now that's we're sculpting with paint and I'm pretty sure most of you have heard me utter that phrase before it's what we have to do that the sculpting and casting can take it so far, we kind of have to take it the rest of the way. 
and that's that's what we're going to do here is take it the rest of the way now as much fun as I'm having over here we're just going to pop in a few things here and then work our way back around to some of the the faces that have the most effect on them. so here let's go a couple of more lights there yeah like that and now let, let's do some of these faces here so we're gonna go back to some turquoise here let's get what the heck let's put some blue in there we're gonna change our turquoise just a touch remember we wanted each of these heads to look a little bit different so this turquoise just gonna be a little bit different and it is it's quite the complement to all of this warm fiery glow and even to the magenta that's why we're going to hit this face here real quick while we're at it and this one too yeah i'm going to let some of this towards work its way to that i'm just going to make sure i'm not also popping him off of my, my little stand here felt like it was moving I mean you want movement in your miniature but that might be taking that a little bit to the extreme here we'll drop some of this again more of a bluish turquoise in there and these all this is this is the pro acryl transparent paints mixed with a few lighter colors and of course all of your object source lighting you get into there now you're talking about the fluorescent paints and those are the golden acrylics I've used a bunch of different fluorescents I've used well the Vallejos those were the first fluorescents that I ever used then I sort of moved into Gonna lighten this up a touch here. I tried out the, I think it was scale 75. I tried out the green stuff world fluorescents, a million different fluorescents, but the golden acrylics ones, while they they're they're thinner, kind of the opposite of the Vallejo ones, which are super thick. And I've got plenty of videos showing those. But if you watch a lot of the recent videos that I've done. With the object source lighting, especially when it's on the oh the some of the Marvel Crisis Protocol, the Hellboy figures especially. Check those out. Well, it's it's nifty because unlike some of the other ones where okay the fluorescent paint is very thin and, and such, but those just they don't cover it all, whereas the golden acrylics, boy even at its thinnest it can still do some pretty impressive things like well that <laughs> and just, like i said I'm, I'm having fun here adding in a different turquoise yeah this one shifted more towards blue so a little bit further away from green here let's do it this way i think you can see that a little bit easier now so you'll see some of the magenta that's in there. Now look at how I'm holding the brush here. Still able to work that texture in. Still able to go right around the eye there. And look at how this really plays up against the not just the magenta in the mouth, but the lava effect there that's on the underside of that and here we'll can't forget that over here too and there will be some areas on these that just it's going to be really hard to reach so if you don't see me paint every single last area on here, well, there's 
sort of a time limit too, I would suppose. But when you look at this, there's going to be, as far as painting time goes, well, what was that? I think these tend to average around three-ish hours a piece or so. So between the painting the base and painting your hydra here, you're looking at it in the neighborhood of nine-ish hours. And like I said, there would probably be some other things that would be done off camera because you just can't necessarily see what I'm doing because it would be blocked by one head or another head or whatever. Yeah, looking to sneak in some of that texture there. Let's see what we can. There's little sort of nobules there on the face, but before we get too much into that, we're going to go into that. That's the purple color that had it was mixed with the white. It kind of gives it that magenta look to it, right? You can drop in a little more texture there into that face. And then where we've gone so heavy in with the turquoise, well, now we're going to throw in a little bit of this purple here. even around the eyes. I mean, the eyes are glowing after all, so maybe we need to show that a little bit. And So there we, we added some light. We can go, it's not like we're, we can't go back to glazing again. We're going to do that here. How's about Oof, right there. Just take some water. It's, it's not just about darkening that down. It's also working in a little bit of tint there. Let's do some more. This is the thing that we really focused on early on. We're going to go back to that for just a second here. So this is something I really try to advocate that, that folks do. Is don't think of just, well, we've got all the darks in that we need. We're just going to keep going lighter. And then, well, now we've got all the darks we need. We're just going to, and the other way around, well, it, it's best to leave, leave the pathway open and go back to stuff that's, that's darker like this. Because we can even, even in here, so well, let's go back the other way here with a few, few ducks. Speaking of texture now, look at this. So let's, let's do this right here. We're going to go in with some, some more texture here. Let's, it's this cross-hatching type stuff here. So we, we've kind of gone, we went middle tone to dark, then back to almost to a highlight, and now we're going back the other way. Look at the seat, same thing over here. Watch that. And again, this is not some expensive brush. I've tried to get, and this is the weird thing, the, the darndest thing, I've tried to get more expensive versions of basically this. And I don't know what's going on, but they don't. And we're talking stuff that costs anywhere between five to thirteen dollars, and they cannot stand up to this. This thing has faced so much punishment already. It's been worked with for many hours. I've had some brushes that are ten times the cost of this. Well, they're barely out of the package, and they're already messed up. So I don't know what's going on. I have no idea. Let's see how much nifty texture we've got there. What, let's see what we can enhance here. Right in there. Remember, we've got to have dark if we want to show light. And 
we are going to do some of that now. Even there in the area where we got fire happening. Gonna try and shoot some more dirt cores down into there and there. And let's let's do something different here. Let's take the purple and the black. We'll mix those together. And the fun thing is because they are translucent. They just, it's interesting. When, when you take something like, say, the coal black or the, the regular creature caster paints, and these are translucent. They may seem very solid, right? But they are, they are actually not. So I, if I want to have so a separation between the, the lava or the, the fire light underneath and then the magenta of the internal glow I just I gotta get darker there this is what I mean about darks that are a different color because we don't want that greenish sort of turquoise black right in the shadow areas well now now we're taking that dark purple and doing something like that in the shadow areas let's try some more of that I want to say over here Yeah. Yeah, if there's too much paint on the brush, you just wipe some of it away. And we're gonna do the same sort of texturizing we did over there. We will do that over here. We got lots of fun textures here. Oh let let's get the underside of that. We need we need some dark in here too. It'll be tricky to work that in there, but that's why we've got a brush with nice long bristles like this holds a whole bunch of paint. Let's me work my way down into there. And a little bit of darker tones around the eyes Let's see if we can't get some striations in these horns or whatever the heck those are supposed to be let's see if we can get some yeah see here just like we did yep did over here we need to separate that we need to get some dark over there I'm gonna do that in a little bit more of a yeah water color fashion and good to go there well we need to do that over here too on this one but it, because we've kept the the amount of different colors that we've used on this lower it's so much easier to, to keep things in harmony I don't know how many times I've seen it on miniatures where and they want to do bold color choices but then there, there's bold color choices that kind of give the double bird to the physics of things and the way kind of light and the mechanics of that are going to work and Mechanics of light, they're not really the most complicated thing in the world, especially if I can understand them. So I'm going to double check and make sure that the, the chat is still... One second here, let me... Okay, that's all still good. Carry on. I need to get a little bit lighter with some of the faces here again let's let's not just go that one direction here we're gonna go in a different direction with this so we're gonna have a slightly different kind of a turquoise yeah this one it's not just lighter but it's more of a greenish rather than that bluish green I'm 
getting some texture on top of the heads. It's, it's a little bit more difficult here. The the way the heads are are sculpted to try and get that same the same striations and cross hatchings that are on say the the bodies. But we'll just we're gonna work on the tops of the heads here for a second while we've got this. We got a, a decent spot. Looks like you can see what it is that I'm trying to do here. And as I said, I've got just so many different object source lighting tutorials. There, and I've got army projects or army painter episodes. Where they, it's not just one episode dedicated to object source lighting. The whole entire unit is. The, the Necron series is that way. It's all about object source lighting, but actually doing that with metallic paints because I don't know if I've ever seen anybody take metallic paints and do something with object source lighting. I just don't think I've ever seen that. And I did that, took a whole entire series and did that. So I get that the cross hatching continues. We're working in some of this more reddish magenta style purple here. So that, that Army Painter Pledge level right there, when you do that, you you sign up for that. I will be sending you an email with links to somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 hours worth of painting videos. Actually, more than that now. That It, it, does, it covers the full range of everything. Basing, lighting, metallics, non-metallics. I've got large creatures, small creatures. I'm going to start doing Aeronautica stuff. I've already done one 40k series. I've got another one coming up. I'm already on my second Warcry series. I've done, what, four Lord of the Rings series. Did a Blood Bowl team. Uh, you're, you're sensing a theme here. We're trying to cover many different genres. Not just one or two. Because I've seen people that, well, okay, they they do a lot of stuff with Space Marines. But not much of anything else. I actually also want to do a series on different Space Marine chapters. And actually that's a lot of the... the Patreon funds I have to go to that to get more new figures. If I want to try these different things, like the, the large scale stuff and other things. So we're just we're changing this purple a little bit. It's more like the magenta that's in the basically in their mouth and their eyes. Speaking of which, where we've got a mouth here, let's see if we can't pop a little bit more of a glow onto this dude here on his neck, where that face is there. We yeah, can't go too crazy with that, otherwise it's just going to be too much. You notice that the, see here you can, I think you can see the difference in that color temperature, look at that. Look at the difference in that color temperature. The other stuff, much more reddish. This, much more towards the blue. Much more towards the blue. Now we're, we're trying to layer these again. Like we've, we did all the layering down here. That's what we're doing there. Now let's, oh yeah, let's get this, let's get some stuff happening here on this face. Right in here. I say I still have to hit that nostril with some some of the fluorescent magenta there. Might just try that here. Let me grab a smaller brush of some kind and well you can see the 
again the fluorescence in action here so you can see how intense that's going to be look at that I mean I'm gonna actually take a little bit of the purple in there to, to believe that knock that down a little right there into that nostril and then there are some of these other nostrils so again we're taking that with the magenta there mixing it with the bright ivory trying to sink this down that's what I like about it so much see the other when I would use say the Vallejo fluorescence they were they were really intense they worked nice but they were so thick it was almost impossible to do what I just did there is to actually get that to sink down into that crevice like that that just boy that would have been really tough to do with the Vallejo stuff because you the more you thin it down the more you start to just wipe away your intense effect there so I'm just gonna brighten up some of these interiors here a bit maybe get some of that reflected on the teeth here but all the while, see, I got my, my purple sitting there, which means now I can sort of pull this out and do the same over here. See that? I'll get, get some of the, more of the magenta mixed into there. There we go. Because we're basically creating these little fire effects inside their heads now and we've got fire effects all over the place now you don't have to do this on yours obviously this is just me it's what I wanted to try on this here here let's let's intensify this this head right here see if we can do some of that can you see I think you can interesting it's actually believe it or not that's darker than what was there but it's actually it's so much more intense that it shows up that much more which is really wild I'm going to try and get this further down the top, especially on this one. See if I can't do that. I'm trying to do a little bit of wet into wet blending there in a few spots. Again, that is the Pro acryl bright ivory mixed with that fluorescent magenta. Here, let's let's get some more color under these under the tongues here. Like I said, we're gonna keep intensifying some of these things like the nostrils and the eyes make sure they look like they're a source of light instead of just well why is that just so much lighter than everything else make them actually look like they're a, a light source but that means well, let's say like along here Gotta add some more light there. But I always have my blue and my purples and everything else that's right there for me to just go back to and now the one thing to with the 
polychrome paint. I know it's been said that uh, wet palette's not super wet palette friendly, but I don't know. My cheap, junky homemade palette seems to work just fine with them, which I find most amusing. All right, let's lighten up this side here, too. Remember, this is the nifty thing. It's basically, it's like it's a wash or whatever. Yeah, it's like a, more like a panel line wash. And then normally that does not happen. Oh, yeah, so much, so much brighter there. That really, really needed that. Here, let's get this nostril over here, too. So much brighter. So much more intense. And that that's why we've got this intensity in the in the lava right here, because it's not enough to just have light color there. This is just super saturated, super intense. It allows the, the light to basically pass right through it. And then back out again. Let's get ourselves some nifty little highlights here on the brows and we can still go lighter than this this is not the lightest I can still actually make that even lighter but I think at a certain point I have to say okay that that's enough by making it lighter Let's see, and I'll probably have to shift over to the other side and make sure I get... No, i got to go way back down in here. Well, it's going to be hard to reach. I don't even know you can see that head. But at least now it's got its magenta glow. Here, let's do the other sides. Once again, taking that, that's that magenta mixed with the bright ivory. And now, now it gets interesting. Remember I told you how much the pro acryls cover? Well, you're taking something that's that intense, and now you're basically mixing it with something that covers like crazy. So I'm going to take that magenta. We're going to mix it with some of our purple there. Now we've got that sort of a like a scar or whatever that goes through the eye, apparently, I guess. Here, I'm taking some of our... Now I want that to actually be more on the greenish side of things, more turquoise, so let's go the other way with it. Looking to have the, the turquoise again to complement things like the magenta. It's that green versus red, but it's not the green green. It's a type of green, and the the red in this case is actually more of a magenta. And then we we just sort of layer like we did this is the, the faded ultramarine here and I can see here now I'm gonna go back to my turquoise over here and we're gonna work on some of this it's a lot like what we were doing over here with the the lava type stuff but now now we have to go a little more subdued with that. 
I look where, where my hands are. They're nowhere near. I mean, how the heck could I do this? Well, I, mean, I guess I could. I don't think you could really see it very much either. So again, looking to get some lighter, lighter tones here on the on the neck, whatever the, the scales, carapace, whatever the heck you would call that. Oh, we're gonna lighten that up a touch. Just as we did on the other side, this is where we do some of the cross hatching finding those extra textures oh, what about on this side here and that's where we got the, the layering process happening too so what we've got over here now we're, we're Switching around to the other side here to do that same that same layering effect, and not just layering a lighter on top of a lighter. It's we got a basically a green on top of a purple. Then we're we're gonna go actually a little bit lighter, and we're gonna reverse that. So it's it's gonna again contribute to that making an area that's yeah, not super interesting at least compared to all that and all the fiery stuff trying to make that more interesting that we get continuing here with this with some lighter tones and by lighter I mean basically a mid-tone this is not a highlight by any stretch of the imagination Let's do some more again. This is almost like a little bit of a stippling action that's happening there. But just like what we did on the other side, this is where we take our darker color here. That's the, the black and purple mixed together. And then we start working back the other way. And since the transparent paints well since they have some translucency to those it means we don't have to do this in a super watery fashion but we still get sort of the benefit almost as if it was more of a wash I just call them dry glazes for the most part had to call it something and I figure that's as good as anything Let's see if I can work once again the darks into this too. Because remember how we did this? We were able to sort of get a light, dark, light transition here. We're trying to do some of that here. Except I don't want to go overboard with reflected light on these because then it, it's just going to compete. It will. It's going to compete for eye attention. Yeah, we're just doing some of this some darker things into these folds. Gives that a bunch more texture to it. Before then, we do something. Oh, let's just take this white and we're going to go into our green turquoise here. Let's see what that's going to do right in this area here. Oh, uh... Good morning, miniatures, conversions, and dioramas by Frankie. Hello, how you been doing? I know it's been a little while. Uh, Elvis is working on a tree canopy. Oh, built a canopy out of silly putty marbles, wooden balls, and aluminum. I made the canopy with a 3D pen. Oh, yeah, I've only ever seen, you know, when you're, you're on Facebook or whatever, and it's says now on Kickstarter or Amazon whatever and you see one of those things you know what I wonder if oh one of those 3d pens would work for basically what I'm looking for is something that can draw out 
sort of panes of glass, like something like on a rose window. You know, you print out the basic pattern of a rose window, and you sort of follow that with your 3D pen. Would that let you actually create a some kind of a rose window? Yeah, you know, like the the leading and the stonework, the stone tracery that you find in those stained glass windows. Because that could be interesting. So again, here we're looking to looking to get some texture on top of that, so I can push that along here. So just like we did on this side, layering up those textures. Remember, we went from sort of a mid-tone turquoise to something that was a little bit lighter mid-tone purple and then we it's still not a highlight because I mean look at look at how dark that is next to that I mean we've gone nowhere near white whatsoever which is what when we do add it in a few areas it, it has more impact it's almost like crying wolf, the boy that cried highlight. If there's just too many of these highlights everywhere, they lose, they really lose their impact. They really will if, if everything is highlighted equally. See, look at that, we're just a few little dots right there. You don't have to go nuts with it. I do the same thing when I've got the, the non-metallic stuff. We're going to talk about the chains of highlights. And I'd, normally I would grab you one of my figures that's got non-metallic metals on it, but I really don't want to lose track of where I am with this right now. So it's this is more of an unusual thing. Again, so we've see we got all the cool colors here, and you turn around and boom... Now you've got, which is going to go on here. There's another reason for the turquoise and the blues because, well, you can see what we've got here. We've got turquoise and blues on the base. We need those repeated on the figure. Otherwise, the base is just going to, it stands out too much in a bad way, essentially. Now, let's go. This area is actually coming towards us the most, so we need to give it that effect of turning. Like I said, we're sculpting with paint here. That's basically what it is that we're trying to do. Basically sculpting with paint. Now, Evolva says you can get a 3D pen on eBay for about $15. Learning curve to it. It's like a, oh, it's like a hot glue gun, only probably way more targeted. Now, I don't know just how much you can get out of one of those 3D pens. I'm guessing if, even if I did it exactly right, I'd probably only get a few windows out of it. But it can't hurt to try, that's for sure. All right, let's do... <laughs> Look at where my hand is, way down here. And see how I'm bracing myself on the, the figure here, and then we'll just... Sometimes, I, I always try to mention people think of... So we're just doing a little... Just a dot there. That's all it is, and we've done those like we did here. See the little dots right there, right? Did all of those. Same thing here. Okay, what are we going to do here? You know what? I think I'm going to see if I can't grab some of this lighter purple here. Lighter purple. Because we got this lit up down here. We got to we got to find some lighting right in here, right on this side of the neck. Oh, so far he's made a cavern set. Oh, Toad Boy. More, more friends from Australia. It's always great to 
have you guys in. Bettany was in earlier. And I'm, well, I'm just going to assume that the, the heat wave continues or I guess the heat wave was interrupted by massive amounts of rain. Basically, <laughs> what I was hearing is that it's either going to be fire or floods. You have one or the other, nothing in between. In so many areas, which is just, that's uh, not something we like to hear. As we always... We definitely worry about our Australian friends when we hear that kind of stuff. So back to this side. Finding the texture. Once again, for all intents and purposes, a red versus green thing that's going on here. The, the intense glow, that magenta in, inside the face, but then... So here, what we're going to do is, we got that. This is a little different approach than what we did on the other side, just to show you here. So we'll take that, we'll take our blue, a little more of our blue there. We're just making ourselves a bit of a tinting glaze that's going to sit right on top of that. So instead of necessarily just trying to find that right color, that just right color, well, or just right value, you know, maybe it's too light somewhere, ah, don't worry about taking some darker tones and going over the top and tinting it, whatever. Let's see if we can't lighten up some of the faces here. So again, welcome to everybody that's that's watching this now. Uh, every every so often, I try and show the the base that goes with this guy, and that base was made in one of my Patreon videos using the Green Stuff World texture rollers, and even the yeah some of the see how we've got some of those bright greens. I might actually have to try and work in. Some of that, of course, this is all going to be covered pretty much by him. So I don't know how much of this you're going to see. But it was fun. I mean, it just, it was more for you guys to actually see how something like that would be painted. It's certainly the, probably one of the larger bases that I've ever tried doing on this. It's tough to do those type of bases or, or large things like this just right now the the current camera setup that I have that's one of the reasons well again why we've got the patreon page going is to try and constantly improve camera setups and that sort of thing now just like we did over here see how we got the, the purple there right what's our next layer we're actually gonna throw it's not just lighter it's just a, it's more greenish, right? Do some here too. And for, the, for those that didn't get to see it before, I'm gonna do that little trick of killing the saturation here in a second. So you can see we've got all of this. Let's go back to our controls over here and go boom. And now we've made it black and white, so you can see. You still get the light and dark textures here, but now you see we've removed. Look at look at how bright the faces are. Look at you can see the the flames inside. You can see the fire here. But when we bring back the color intensity, like so, you get the chance to really see all the different types of contrasts. Going back around this way. And in here, I'm definitely going to be throwing some some of those darker glazes into here. So just give me a second with this. Like so. And then let's go back to our... Got some 
black over here. We got our transparent blue. And again, these are the Creature Caster Monument Flow Fuse transparent paints. Just with a few instances where we've used a opaque lighter color, also from Pro Acryl. So I look at this. See now, it doesn't just darken that; it also tints it. Let's do that here. Because if we want that to be light, this has to be a tad bit darker. And we're going to... Here. I think you can... Yeah, I think now you can see that. The advantage of this over the contrast paints, and you've, I've got tons of videos where I use the contrast paints, is that I've just got water here. I even have makeup sponges if I want to take some things away like that. I will do some more darks down in here into some of the crevices and such. It's, it's more than just dark. It's also tinting. You can see that. Look, I'm adding a, a few more striations into here. But these are very translucent. You just don't... Let's see, we'll do some here. Same thing. Same thing. Just a real delicate stroke. Again, the hand's nowhere near that metal ferrule. It just allows for these lighter, gentler strokes. I mean, I can see some of the purples there. I can see the magenta there, the turquoise. It's layer upon layer. And again, over here, look at this. I can, I say, you know what? Just going to tone that down. Just going to knock it down. I can do that over here. I can do that over here, too. Here, that, that's the same bit of a partial glaze type color right here. Oh, I see Will Boone has just left a little message here. How you doing, Will? Oh, and thanks for liking my carnage. Oh, yeah, that was... Well, you you know me with the lizard man. I, I love me some lizard man. And carnosaurs, I don't know, there's just... What is that, the, a nostalgia type thing? You always remember your first carnosaur. So it's always nifty to see someone else's interpretation on it so just as I was doing over there we're going to take again it's sort of a it's that dry glaze that I was talking about before it's not super watery and this is just one of those cheap craft brushes and I basically have some black I have some blue I am even got some purple in there now. And we're just going to try and you know, locate some more darks here. It's that constant balance of, well, one minute you're looking to get some more darks in there, then you work more towards the light. Then you say, well, maybe we went too far in one direction or the other. And not just with light. This I want to, yeah. See how that kind of tints that just a bit. Some more. And the the glow here down under here. Let's try and add some more texture. Here's our. Look at that nice long. Thin little lines. It's a, a synthetic watercolor brush. You know, it's going to hold more paint, especially of this more, oh, should we say watered down variety? Now, on his chest here, let's look into. I need a few darks especially over here, his tail. And if I want that 
fire effect to translate. I want that to translate. I have got to add not just dark there, but remember that's that red versus green. And people say, well, there's no green there. There's no red in the classic sense of red, and there's not. But that's a fiery glow, and there's some orange red there. And there's actually, well, this is certainly more green than it is blue at this point. And that was actually by having some of the, the black work its way in there. That was that Prussian blue I was telling you about. So here again, along the the tail here. And then, let's see here, I'm going to tone a few things down. We've got a couple of these little fire highlights in there but now we're back to the green here we actually did quite literally add some green down into those shadow areas there why is that and once again I'll show you the base here so we've got the greens that are in that base and again that's the previous episode then I will be linking this the first two episodes to this you go Basically, if you're watching this in, in a replay mode, you just go, when you're at the end of the video, there's going to be some end screens there. You'll be able to check those out. Now, I also have playlists for different things. I've got basing playlists, Lord of the Rings playlists, Marvel Crisis Protocol, Hellboy playlist, Blood Bowl playlist. So I've got... Dark Sword playlist got all kinds of playlists to store to make it easier for you to find certain topics, certain techniques. All right, so now I'm going to go back into something a little bit lighter right in here. So I got the brush spread out, so it's not in that pointy mode. It's more of a filbert mode. Plenty of paint on the brush, not a dry brush. What I'm just going to do is scumble this over some of that texture where I can't reach. But look at this. It's still a filbert brush, but look at I can still do, see the fine lines like that? So again, it's, it's amazing what a brush that literally costs a matter of pennies can do. And I've, I've tried to like the expensive brushes. I've tried them. And boy, well, they, they certainly can't take the punishment. There's no doubt about that. Now we've got a little bit of the black worked in. Makes it more of a middle tone, less of a light color. And then over here, we'll just give that a quick little something there to remind me to make that lighter. Now let's go over to this side and do the same, do the same thing. Because right on the other side of it is our fire effect. Let's go down into, here's another one here where we have plenty of the purple there and not a lot of the turquoise, so we will Start to dive into some of that here. Oh, hey, Brian. How's it going? Oh, I said, lizard men are always fun. Love painting them and seeing what others do with them. Yeah, I've got still some of the... What was some of the old... What were they? The, the Croxigors. Because, uh, well, there's... They sort of went, it's the first iteration, what was that, 5th edition fantasy was was more of the Mayan look where things were much rounder. And then the the 2003-ish or so, that's when they started going with the more of the Aztec look and things were more squared off. And I, I have some, well, my Skink and Croxigor units, I had some of the old-time Skinks with the bows. Well, even though I don't have bows anymore, I think I was able to 
take some of the bows off of them or whatever, or put the javelins kind of strapped across their back. So here's another case of, again, texturizing that with the magenta. Now it, It's been sort of a crazy couple of weeks just trying to get through a whole bunch of commission things. And, and I'm hoping that this week coming up I can start to get to some of the stuff that I've wanted to for weeks and weeks and weeks. It definitely turned colder here, so I had a had to get the humidifier going, which reminds me I might take a drink of something here soon enough. Oh, Wills is currently painting an army for a friend. Finished the Carnosaur. Oh, oh, the old hammer. That, that well, there's a Facebook group right for the old hammer stuff. So again, look at we got the purple. It goes to the turquoise, then back to the purple, then down to the turquoise again. We're gonna find ourselves to get some more of these, some more of those little lights. Again, a different type. So this is not the mag magenta type of a look here. Whoop! Don't want to move that. Ah, uh, well, inks work in the chat. I don't want to get... Oh, well, links work. Uh, that I don't know. Well, you can you can put it there and we can find out. <laughs> I mean, I, I would imagine that unless I've actually set it for that. I think maybe that's more of a Twitch thing, maybe. I don't know. Because I know Kathy, did, she has to actually allow somebody to put a link there. So if... If it doesn't let you do it, I apologize for that. I've, I've got to keep painting here, so I can't uh, take time to change the setting. Actually, I don't even know how the heck to do that, so <laughs> there you go. I've never had to do that, so I do not know. It does look like the Super Chat is working, so if anybody has the ability to do Super Chats on their YouTube account, you can do that. Uh, let's see, again, we got turquoise there. We're going to go with a bit of the pink next. And look at this is all the time. This looks like it's just 100% opaque. It is not. This is actually very translucent. Maybe not as translucent as some of those other glazes I just did not too long ago. But close enough. Close enough. Okay. So at this definitely... All right. Oh, you can see it. You can see it. This is another, again, advantage of the, the transparent paints because while that looks like some kind of opaque highlight, it's actually, it's a light glaze. That is actually a lighter color paint that's happening there, but it is definitely water here. Look, I'll, see how watery that is? Look at that. But yet on here, it, it's kind of registering as a highlight. Not all glazes are dark and not all opaque colors have to be light sometimes it can be dark we did that so it just all of these these hard and fast rules I don't know maybe I'm obsessed with breaking rules now speaking of opaque okay now we're gonna have less of that translucent stuff going on because we just threw in some of that faded ultramarine there A little bit more. So now with 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 that, that's going to become more opaque. We don't we don't quite have the ability to do the glazing that we did before. Just it's no big deal. Just just like with the oil paints, where you have to be aware of how thick or thin your paint is. It's the same thing here. All right, let's turn this around. I just want to sneak in more of that purple there. 
And I turn this around, look at the whole opposite side of his neck. What's the color there? It's, it's turquoise over there. All right. Let me see. Do I actually have... I don't even know if I've got my glue in here or not. And I think my chat... Oh, there we go. Finally caught up. Hey, Gary. How's it going? Um, actually, I've been wondering if there is fluorescent oils for me to find. I have not actually seen fluorescent oils. I've been begging companies to make those. But I have yet to actually see the fluorescent oils. Unfortunately... All right. Yeah, a little bit more with my purples here. I might even go into some of those these magentas down here with something that's even whiter. So I think some of these heads they have to just be kind of naturally darker so that they set they go back a little bit. Now, I've, I've been told that it's possible to make fluorescent oils, that it's there's really not a super special chemical thing. They are just more, they're just going to be more translucent. They're going to allow that light to transfer through that much faster. So once again, that same sort of gentle brush stroke here. Like we've done before. Let's see, I want to make sure I can still keep that. Yeah, see, here we're, again, we're changing that around just a touch. We have that, that soft approach. Trying to get a get a cool color on the other side of where the the fire glow is here. And we're even mixing the the blue and the the purple together now. But uh, we definitely need some more. I mean, not that you guys can see that. Just allow me to get a little more of my blue color in the head there. Oh, let's do some right in here. And I think I'm going to do even more. So let's go, because we've done a lot of the turquoise, a lot of the, the purple. Now let's do one more. Another little surprise for folks. Why? It, it's the same blue that we used here on our base in the last episode. Again, I'm going to let some of this work its way further down into some of the crevices here. I know it can be hard for you maybe to see some of these areas and what's going on. Actually, it's hard for me to see some of them too. Now let's go a touch later with that. There. So we've focused, like I said, on the, the turquoise and the purples. Like you can see more of the turquoise right there. Jade, whatever you want to call it. Works its way back into the purple. Okay. Definitely need a little bit of a lighter effect. We got to do something in there too, and I'm gonna see. 
I think you can actually, you'll be able to see what I'm trying to reach down in here. Just trying to get some of the, and it, it can't be super bright by any stretch of the imagination here. Now, let's, that's okay. We're going to go to the other side here. Grab some of our purple, and I. Th oh, let's see now. You guys think you can see it now? Uh, Marion Street sells them. There's someone selling them. Oh, hold on, I'll find you. Marion Street. Okay, I'm going to have to. I have to see if. Dick Blick or someone sells those. Oh, I drew your bit by painting from others and putting around ideas. Well, actually, I've been at this miniature painting thing for well, 20 years now, this year. And before that, I did regular 2D art for, oh, 20 some odd years. So basically what I'm doing is a lot of the, the things I used to do with watercolors and pastels and oils. I'm just, now I've got a really fun 3D canvas that I can actually play games with, like Lord of the Rings the other day, where the Easterlings were victorious. And I'm actually trying to work up a battle report for that too. It's going to be more of a pictures battle report. And I'm actually going to try and use, it's a new function that I have here on XSplit, something where I can actually draw on the screen. But when uh, I've actually got one of my more recent videos, it was, it's basically called 20 Years of Painting. And I think I published that just uh, maybe a week and a half ago or whatever. It's where I've got a miniature that I painted 20 years ago, and I talk about all the things that are very different now. Industry is different now. There, there's tools out that I never could have dreamed of 20 years ago. I never could have imagined, so, well, some of the miniatures that are out, the technology, and just the simple things like the leaf cutters, the texture rollers, you just didn't have that kind of stuff. You really couldn't make those things, well, at least not anywhere near as easy as you can now. I'm turn this around here and see if I can't work in some. A few, uh, and boy, that, it looks white on their heads, but it's not. <laughs> it looks so light, but it is, it's still. I don't know, if you want to go, what, 1 through 10, it's still only about a 3-ish. But boy, just because we've established so much in the way of darks, yeah, we barely lightened up that faded ultramarine. Okay, here, let's, let's do the same thing we did on some of the other necks in an area like this again we're see if we continue with the texture a bit and then but it's not all the way we're not gonna have this whole thing equally we we just find a place to stop with that highlight chain gotta find a place to stop now this could, put, yeah, I think it's going to need a little bit of, a little more glow over on this side. And that's just by, we added a little bit of the fluorescent to that. Mm, yeah, I'm going to get a touch more into here too. So again, by, by virtue of these layers of this, we just start to you can start to see more of what's going on with the skin. All 
right. Just like we have going over here. Lots of trend. Now here we have no reflected light in it. We gotta do something about that. So I'm looking to get some of my one of my grayish color here. I'll turn this upside down. Well, as much as I can. Uh, the old time when we had such a few amount of tools and just there weren't that many miniature companies either. And now you have all kinds of miniature companies and they're not just doing little one-off resin sculpts. They're doing whole plastic injection molding stuff. That just, I didn't think that only a few companies were ever, ever going to be able to do plastic injection molding stuff. Little did I know that was going to expand way beyond just a few. So far beyond just a few. Now we did the, the lighter stuff there. We can go back the other way. Let me just grab a little bit more of my transparent black here. Don't need a whole bunch. Not at this stage. And we're going to grab our blue here. We'll do our little glaze type of thing. Where was that? I was over here. Yeah, I can just go with a little more water. Turn this upside down for you, and then. So we're able to get ourselves a little more reflected light under there. Some more glazing on the faces here. Oh yeah, let's get a uh, couple of glazes on the underside there. I'm gonna work in a bit more of the, the texture there. And just if I see some areas that are a little bit just too sharp or whatever, that stand out a little bit too much, I can just see like this. It's a, it's just a brush stroke. It's not like the the, look at that. The glaze is not necessarily falling down into any kind of a crevice or whatever. Not like some of the stuff we were doing earlier. But it's still basically a glaze. Yeah, that that's something about. Talking about something that was different way, way, way long ago. It's yeah, you know, they didn't really have the the glazing like this necessarily. It was more of a well, you just take a black wash or something. And that was that was about the extent of it. All right, look into and we can print our own minis. Yep, that is just. It is leaps and bounds that, well, now, and geez, remember everything was all the, the spool type printer, and it just, it built its up uh, kind of from the ground up, and now you've got way more of the resin printers that work in just the opposite fashion. And I'm sure five years from now, we'll look, haha, remember those old resin printers? I guess that is just the fickle nature of digital technology. Well, I guess technology pretty much of every kind, I suppose. Oh, I'm going to go into some lighter stuff here. And all the while, remember, all I was using to, to thin this stuff down is just plain old water that is it no mediums no nothing now i have tried the the contrast medium we've done other videos with that i think live sessions i've also used it's called i think it's called master media and that's from green stuff world uh, those those are neat they they can do some fun things i uh, just you know water is well free for one thing well sort of kind of but it's just it's easier to have everywhere. I mean, it, there's times where maybe you're 
painting at a game store or whatever is going on and you don't necessarily have access to your usual stuff. So again, another kind of doing a bit of a glaze down in there. You can't really see that, I know. I'm going to go back to Got some faded ultramarine here into our turquoise. Let's see what we can do to bring out a few more, a few more details on the faces here. Still trying to, just like I was on the the necks and everywhere else, trying to bring out whatever textures that I see and sometimes create some that I don't see. There, we'll, we'll take that a little lighter in a few spots here. See if I can't get some violets on the teeth there. Sometimes with the teeth, I like to just Oh, some kind of a water effect, so whether it's the art code or the secret weapon water effects or a Vallejo thing or whatever. Sometimes I like to take those and create that sort of that glossy look. Now let's go back to my, that's the fluorescent there. Pop a little bit of a brighter color here. Maybe even I'll just drop in a few little of these magenta things in here. But I can always, like I said, I can always knock these things down. We doesn't always have to be that lightest. Yeah, there we go. And then we sort of fill in around the eyes a little bit. Here, that's what I like about this particular the golden acrylics fluorescence because you can actually do basically glazes with those and they'll sink down into those crevices but they will maintain they'll maintain that integrity some of the other ones that I've tried that it just basically turns into slime it just it becomes you just can't use it for painting here's a touch yeah let's get some Sort of knock that down. We did it on that side. Let's do it on the other side here. There. So I think that should be a nice, nice compliment, and it should work pretty well with our fire base there. I think I'm going to have to put these together off camera. There's just no room and I think it would probably just uh, break as I try to rip it off of here. So I, I think I'm just going to have to assemble that off camera. That's, that's another reason, another thing I'm hoping with the Patreon page to secure is basically a third filming station because I've just got some new terrain in and I want to do more terrain projects but the, the cameras that I've got right now they just don't work for that sort of thing well that's the other thing too is I want to get some pictures of, of these things separately also now, oh, uh, the Instagram, see, I got that Instagram thing right there, the follow me on Instagram. If you want to see 
pictures of painted things here let me take you to what do we got here ah so more object source lighting and you can see stuff like this on the Instagram page and oh look I'm just gonna let that dry for a second here are some of those figures so you can this is just Reaper bones right here I just I mean love me some object source lighting so it works on miniatures just check out the Instagram you can see some of the the army painting series that I've done already so I would just trying to pick up some of the, the the texture here make it look the the eyes are shining reflecting a little bit down onto the faces here oh maybe some there and that should probably be reflecting over here a touch all right, this is wandering off camera. Now, like, like I said, this is why I, I want to get a just a, overall a larger setup here, and that requires a, another machine and everything else. And I suppose that'll let me do some more if I can have another machine that I can render more videos. There's an awful lot that goes into those, the, the painting videos. Figure, it takes anywhere from 9 to 11 hours per video. Because, well, I've been filming for 2 hours and 36 minutes. That doesn't count all the time prepping this area, the hour and a half I spent getting this ready just for filming this. Then you also have to factor in the time it takes to do the photography, do the editing, and all that other kind of stuff, and then finally the rendering, and then the uploading. All right, I'm going to flip this over here and looking to do some bright highlights. Well, brighter, like we've done here, some of these little, these little lights. How oh, good you can see it. First, I was worried you weren't going to be able to see that. Here's some more. I do think I want to enhance some of my lights here. We've done it in other places. Well, let's go back around to here. Can't try not to lose my original. How's about a bit more here? A couple more. Now, mm, tempted to throw a few lighter things onto his tailor, but I think I'm just going to leave that alone. Now, if you're coming in sort of on the later side of this here, if you want to get the, the notifications of this, you do the, well, obviously the subscribe thing, but you, was it, click on the all notifications, which is a thing that I keep forgetting to do myself, and time after time, I end up saying, well, wait a minute, they were live? When did that happen? It's because I did not, didn't hit that all notifications button. So that's definitely something to think about if you want to know when these are going to happen. And I'm going to try, geez, I don't know if I'll be able to do that this weekend, because I, oh, guess what, be filming Patreon videos. But I also do have a, a Twitch 
channel. It's just Wapelius. That's it on Twitch. No capital. Two L's, two P's, just like the Instagram account. And I'll try and do things there. I, I guess I think maybe the, the Twitch atmosphere is more for longer things like this, right, that most people don't generally think of. YouTube painting videos that are, well, now two hours and 40 minutes long. That's really almost more of a Twitch thing, although, I mean, I do these things all the time. I've done some that were over three hours. Uh, I, I don't know. There's, uh, with the, ex the Twitch, there's a little bit more expectation of doing longer, longer streams necessarily than this. But speaking of which, it is going to be time for me to just, uh, yeah, I'll do the little things that I can't quite reach now. But for sure, and I'll post some pictures of this too, to the, once it's on its base, obviously to my Instagram, but also to the YouTube channel. So thanks again, everybody. Remember, this is from Footsore Miniatures. It's the Mythic Gods Kickstarter. We'll just take one last peek at that here. So, yeah, there we go. Mythic Gods, foot sore. Check it out. They're in their final, what now? Now they're in their final 30 hours, so go check that out. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it, and everybody that was in the chat and participating. Oh, thanks, Ben. I'm glad that you were able to catch this one, too, because I know it's the timing always hasn't worked out so well. So thanks again, everybody, and I will catch you on the next episode.